This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 2.10. These problems will give you practice on identifying the correct reaction when there is competition between substitution and elimination reactions of alkyl halides. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018 in Lesson 2.10. And to get a complete picture of how to solve these problems, you really should read lessons 2.1 through 10. You can also find additional chemistry videos and information on how to match those videos up to your particular course's textbook to help you with your course at protonguru.com. Perhaps the most complex type of question that we can be asked regarding the substitution and elimination reactions of alkyl halides is when we're posed with a substrate reacting with a certain type of reactant. And we have to choose between SN1, SN2, E1, and E2. Sometimes more than one pathway competes with one another. Uh, sometimes there's no reaction at all. So let's analyze some of these questions and see how we can figure this out. If we look at our first substrate and the reactant, perhaps the first thing you can do is look at what type of reagent you have as a reagent. First of all, it's ionic. It's going to separate into sodium plus and the methoxide anion, CH3O minus with a minus on the O. That is both a strong base and a good nucleophile. A strong base being present means we can do an E2 reaction. A good nucleophile being present means that we can do an SN2 reaction. The fact that the substrate is secondary indicates that the substrate is also viable for both SN2 and E2 pathways. So how do we decide which of these two reagents which of these two reaction pathways will predominate in this case. Well, we'll have to look first at our most important site, the alpha site, and then look adjacent to it, the beta position. If you have a branch on that beta position in addition to your parent chain, in addition to the parent chain, there's this extra branch. That will slow a nucleophile approach, at least from some of the angles, towards the site you would need to attack with a nucleophile to do an SN2 reaction. So in such cases, an E2 reaction will win out because of that beta branch. The E2 product we would get from that reaction would be this alkene. If we look at the second problem, this is a covalent compound. No anions will be produced in solution, so we have a very, very poor nucleophile and a very, very weak base. We can't do an E2 reaction or an SN2 reaction at any reasonable rate using this poor nucleophile weakly basic reagent. So we look at our substrate and it's secondary. We say, well, a secondary substrate can do SN1 and E1 reactions, and those reactions do not need a strong base or a good nucleophile. So we would expect some type of mixture of the E1 product, which is the alkene, and the SN1 product, which would be produced from this carbocation. This carbocation should rearrange from a tertiary carbocation which will then undergo substitution to form your SN1 product. You would expect some of each of those, and it would be difficult to predict without knowing a little bit more about the conditions, which of these would be predominant. In our second page of problems, we have an ionic substrate again, hydroxide being a good nucleophile and a strong base. And then we see that we have a primary substrate. Having a good nucleophile and a strong base indicates it's possible to do SN2 and E2 reactions, but the SN2 reaction is fastest on a primary site, whereas the E2 reaction is slowest on such a site. We would expect predominantly SN2 pathway here. In our second question, let's change this so it's different from the first. Let's say we just heat this in some water. Now we have a primary substrate and we don't have a strong base. We don't have a good nucleophile, and we can't do SN2. We can't do E2 without a strong base. We can't even do SN1 or E1 because we need to make a carbocation in those cases, and a primary carbocation is very unstable. So we would have no reaction in such cases. Finally, we have this tertiary substrate, and another ionic reactant. So we have a strongly basic or very good nucleophile as a reagent. It's possible to do both SN2 re reaction and E2 reaction. But we know that SN2 reactions don't work on the tertiary site, whereas E2 reactions do. So we would expect an E2 reaction to predominate 
in this case, producing this alkene. Let's look at some more substrates. These substrates are all the same on this page. They're all secondary. Secondary substrates work for all four types of reactions we're looking at. And we're going to, have to be cautious because there is a stereogenic carbon in each case as well. So let's look at the first type of reagent we have. It's ionic metal. We'll fragment off, dissociate from the anion. It might be important for us to draw out the structure of the anion in order to be able to figure out what it looks like as a Lewis structure. So we have this resonance stabilized acetate anion. And the acetate anion, because it's stabilized by resonance, is rather weak as a base, weaker than hydroxide. But it's still a good nucleophile because it's an ion and it is not super bulky. So we would expect an SN2 reaction to predominate in this case. So we should have our substrate with substitution at the leaving group site. One thing you need to be careful about is you've got to attach the nucleophile at the atom with a minus charge on it. It's the oxygen that came off of the sodium, so you've got to attach at that point. Now we have done substitution at a stereogenic center, and we know that the nucleophile has to come from the opposite side of the leaving group attachment site. Backside attack, we have Walden inversion, so you see that whereas the leaving group was attached with a wedge line, we now have our nucleophile attached through a hash line. In our second problem, we have a covalent compound. Water will not dissociate to a very large extent into hydroxide and proton. So this is going to be a rather weak base and a rather poor nucleophile. So we're stuck with doing a combination of the E1 reaction and the SN1 reaction. And the SN1 reaction being stereorandom will lead to a racemic mixture of R and S isomers at that site. Finally, we have this excess means simply more than one equivalent of this reagent. This reagent is ionic again. We would expect to get sodium cations and iodide anion. Iodide is a very stable anion, so it's a pretty weak base, but it's a very good nucleophile. And we would expect to see then the SN2 pathway predominant. Now, our attack again occurs at a stereogenic center, and we have to have the Walden inversion. The iodide should point the opposite direction of where the bromine had been attached.